To prepare for a stem cell transplant or donor stem cell collection, you or a caregiver will inject medications at home. This video will show you how to give the injections. Growth factor is used by patients and donors before stem cell collection. It is used to increase stem cell production in your bone marrow. You may hear growth factor referred to as filgrastim or one of the brand names Neupigen, Granix, Zarxio, or Nivistim. You will get growth factor as an injection or shot under your skin a few days before your stem cells are collected. You can give these injections to yourself or a caregiver can give them to you. Today we will show you how to give these injections at home. Here are the supplies you will need to give growth factor injections. The pharmacy will send you pre-filled syringes of growth factor medication. You must keep the pre-filled syringes in the refrigerator in the original packaging. Put them near the front of the refrigerator or on the shelves inside the refrigerator door so that they don't freeze. If medication is left at room temperature, contact your care team for further instructions. The medication will come in syringes filled with either 300 micrograms or 480 micrograms. You may use more than one syringe of the medication for an injection depending on the dose prescribed for you. For example, a 780 microgram dose will use a 300 microgram and a 480 microgram syringe. 300 plus 480 equals 780. This means you may need to inject more than one syringe to get the right dose. Check the dose on the prescription your nurse or pharmacist gave you before you start. You will also need alcohol swabs to clean the area of the injection. You should use a new swab for each injection if you are using more than one syringe. For safety, you will be sent a sharps container to throw away the used syringes. You will throw the container away after you finish all your injections on the last day or if it is full. To throw it away, tightly close the lid and put it in your regular trash. If it is full and you need another sharps container, contact your nurse. You can find more information about safe needle disposal at www.safeneedledisposal.org. Follow the instructions from your nurse or pharmacist about what time you need to give the injections and the exact dose you need to inject. Remember, you may need to use more than one syringe depending on the dose listed on your prescription. If you have any questions about your dose or timing, call your care team. 30 to 60 minutes before you plan to give these injections, take the medication you will need for that day's dose out of the refrigerator. Before you give the injection, lay out all the supplies on a clean table or counter. Check the expiration dates on all supplies. Check to make sure the medication is clear and has no color. Contact your care team if the medication is expired or if it is discolored or cloudy. This diagram shows the areas on the body where you can give the injections. The abdomen or belly or the front of the middle thighs are the easiest places to use if you are giving yourself the injections. If a caregiver is giving the injections, they can also use the outer area of your upper arms. You should be able to pinch an inch of skin at the site you are going to use. You will need to inject the medication into the fat tissue, not into the muscle. Remember, you may need to give more than one injection. If you are giving more than one injection in a night, space the injections at least one inch apart. Always stay at least two inches from your belly button and from any scars. Do not use areas that are bruised, tender, or swollen. Wash your hands before you start. Move clothes out of the way. Use one alcohol swab to clean the skin you will inject. Wipe the skin for about 15 seconds using a circular motion, starting at the center and moving outward. Let the skin air dry. Do not wipe it dry. Then prepare the syringes. The syringe you have at home may look slightly different than the one we are showing you. Take the syringe out of the package. Pull the cap straight up to remove it. Once you remove the needle cap, don't put the syringe down or let it touch anything. Hold the syringe like a dart. Gently pinch the skin at the injection site. Fully insert the needle straight into the skin at a 90 degree angle. Slowly push the plunger until all the medication is gone from the syringe. Let go of the skin and pull the needle straight out. Use an alcohol pad to put gentle pressure on the area for about 5 to 10 seconds. This will help stop bleeding from the needle prick. 
You do not need to put on a bandage if you are not bleeding. When you are done giving the injection, some syringes have a safety needle guard that automatically retracts the needle. Others do not have a needle guard. For safety, do not try to put the cap back on the needle. Place the used syringes in the sharps container. Never put them right into the regular trash or recycling bin. You may have to give more than one injection based on your prescribed dose. You should give these injections one right after the other. Use a different site for each injection at least one inch away from the last injection. Follow the same instructions by cleaning the site with an alcohol swab, giving the injection, applying pressure, and then putting the syringe in your sharps container. For more information about safe needle disposal in your area, visit www.safeneedledisposal.org. You may have side effects after your injection. Irritation or burning at the injection site can happen, especially if you inject the medication when it is cold. Take the medication out of the refrigerator 30 to 60 minutes before you give the shot. Bone pain or achiness is another common side effect. Most often the pain is in the bones of the thighs, hips, and upper arms. To help with these side effects, you can take an antihistamine like Claritin the day before or the day of your injection and continue every day that you inject. You can also take over-the-counter pain medications such as acetaminophen or Tylenol as needed to help with pain. While rare, some patients may have an allergic reaction or problems with the spleen. Call your physician right away if you have shortness of breath, swelling around the eyes or mouth, or left upper stomach pain. You can call the number on the screen 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Call 911 or go to the nearest emergency room for these symptoms. Severe shortness of breath at rest, chest pain, or loss of consciousness. You may need to give a medication called Plerixafor, brand name Mozabil, in addition to growth factor. Growth factor increases the number of stem cells. Mozabil helps the bone marrow release those stem cells into the bloodstream. If your physician prescribed Mozabil for you, please watch the next few minutes of the video for instructions. The supplies you need to give Mozabil injections are similar to what you use for growth factor injections. The main difference between the two medications is that Mozabil will come in a vial that you will need to draw up into a syringe yourself. You will use each vial only one time. Even if some medication is in the vial after you draw up the dose, throw the vial away into the sharps container. To draw up and then inject Mozabil, you will need a vial of Mozabil medication. Keep Mozabil at room temperature. Do not put it in the refrigerator. You will need one milliliter or three milliliter syringes. The size of the syringes may depend on your prescribed dose. You will need syringe needles. Your pharmacy may send you two different sized needles. Use the larger needle, usually 18 gauge, to draw up the medication. Use the smaller needle to inject the medication. The package label will show the size of the needle. You will need to use alcohol swabs and you will need the sharps container that you used for your growth factor injections. Wash your hands before you get started. Then prepare the medication by following these steps. Take the cap off the vial. Clean the rubber stopper with one alcohol swab. Open the syringe package. Open the needle package. If you have two different size needles, use the larger size for this step. Leaving the cap on the needle, screw the needle onto the syringe. Some needles have a safety feature. Be careful not to activate it. If that happens, put the needle in the sharps container and get a new needle. Pull back the plunger and draw air into the syringe. The amount of air drawn should be the same amount as the prescribed dose. The lines on the side of the syringe tell you how much is in the syringe. Pull the cap straight off the needle and insert the needle straight through the rubber stopper. Push the plunger of the syringe and inject the air into the vial. Turn the vial upside down. Keep the tip of the needle in the liquid and slowly pull the plunger out to draw the medication into the syringe. Pull the plunger back so it lines up with the line for the dose you need. Keeping the needle in the vial, check the syringe for air bubbles. Gently tap the syringe until air rises to the top. 
slowly push the plunger to force the air out of the syringe. Keeping the tip of the needle in the liquid, pull the plunger back again until the dose you need is in the syringe. After you draw the medication into the syringe and are ready to inject the medication, make sure you have the right size needle on the syringe. Your pharmacy may send you two different size needles. If you have two different size needles, you should use the larger one to draw the dose and the smaller one to inject. To change the needle before giving the injection, unscrew the large needle and replace it with the smaller needle. Put the larger needle into the sharps container. The steps to give the injection are the same as we reviewed for growth factor. Please review that section of the video if you would like to see the steps again. The most common side effect of Mosabil is diarrhea. It can start within one hour of taking the medication. If you have diarrhea, you can take the medication Loperamide, which has the brand name Emodium. You should take one 2 mg pill after every loose stool. Do not take more than 16 mg of Emodium in 24 hours. Let your care team know if Emodium does not help. Other side effects may include injection site reactions like redness, irritation and itching, nausea, vomiting, fatigue, headache, and gas. While rare, some patients may have an allergic reaction. Call 911 or go to the nearest emergency department for these symptoms. Severe shortness of breath at rest, chest pain, or loss of consciousness. Thank you for watching this video. We hope it helps you feel more confident about giving these injections at home. Please be sure that you understand these directions. Remember to ask your care team if you have any questions about your medication or side effects. Be sure to use these medications exactly as prescribed. Do not use more or less of it, and do not use it more often than directed. Thank you.